Mexico, but if you're new to the area, you might wonder, which way is the Gulf of Mexico? So if you look directly across the river, the Gulf of Mexico is about 40 miles in that direction. If you could go over the land and the swamp to get there, but if this boat wanted to sail all the way to the Gulf of Mexico on the Mississippi, it would be about twice as far, closer to 80 miles because the river bends so many times on its way to the sea, it's much farther by river than going over the land. So the Mississippi River, it's a key feature of North America, very important. And the earliest European explorers understood its importance the moment they knew of its existence. And the French Empire began exploring the Mississippi in the 1680s with the explorer Cavalier La Salle. And La Salle was a French fur trader and trapper all the way north in Canada. And through the fur business, he got to know a lot of Native Americans, and he learned their language, and he became their friend. And they were talking one day, and they said to him, you know, you should come with us down the Mississippi River. You'll have a great time, and you'll learn a lot about this country. So LaSalle did. He went down the Mississippi River with a team that included some Native Americans. And they had such a successful voyage that LaSalle went to the King of France afterwards. And he told the king he wanted to take a second voyage on the Mississippi River. But this time, instead of floating down with the current from Canada, he would begin in the Gulf of Mexico and sail north to Canada on the river. So the King of France thought that was a good idea and gave La Salle some ships. And La Salle sailed to the of the next great French explorers, Iberville and Bienville, who have streets named after them in the city today. And Iberville and Bienville were much more than just explorers. They were military men, and they wanted to control this river for the French Empire. But I'm going to interrupt that narrative for just a minute or two to tell you about the port side of the boat. We are about to pass the center of the historic French Quarter, Jackson Square, dominated by the iconic three spires of the St. Louis Cathedral. And right in front of that cathedral, an equestrian statue of Andrew Jackson, the hero of the Battle of New Orleans. And the gray buildings to the left and the right sides of the cathedral are the Cabildo and the Presbyter, which represent the power of the church and the power of the state in colonial Louisiana. They were both recognized to be very important. The red brick buildings to the far ends of the square are the Pontalva apartment buildings, which are still used for people who live in today. A little farther on in the French Quarter, you will find the French Marketplace, which has all kinds of fruits, vegetables, grains, and handicrafts and souvenirs. You never know what you're going to find in the French Market, so it's often worth a look. So, Iberville and Bienville, they wanted to control this river to keep our town dry. And the Native Americans pointed right here to the French Quarter we're passing. They said they'd been camping and trading here for generations, and this was the high ground, it would never flood. And they were right, because to this very day, the French border has never flooded. The oldest part of town was high and dry, even when much of the rest of the city did flood. And that is one of the reasons that the city could grow for 300 years, because the oldest part of town was always much safer and more pleasant than the landscape for many miles in every other direction. So Iberville and Bienville 
They found the place for their town, and they drew snakes in the ground. That's not the same thing as building a town, because you need a lot of people to move here and live here and build it all. So the French advertised for settlers. They advertised in France, but also in Switzerland and Western Germany, because having Catholic settlers was the most important thing. They couldn't afford to demand specifically French settlers because they couldn't, they needed so many people, they couldn't be too particular. And in these advertisements for settlers, the French told a lot of lies to make this place seem nicer and more pleasant than it actually was. Because they figured by the time people got here, it would be too late for them to change their minds because they already sold the house in the old country. So the French said, so the French, they had the place for New Orleans picked out. They had the people to move in and start building it. But then they needed farms to feed all these people and to make a profit for a growing soybean crisis anywhere in the world. These ships can be very quickly loaded and sent at speed with food and shelter to help the needy or with weapons to defeat our enemies whenever the crisis requires. and lived a French lifestyle. They just had Spanish houses to live in after the Great Fire. So the combination of Spanish architecture and French culture was a tremendous success for many decades going forwards in New Orleans. So the Spanish made these changes to the slave code and the architecture, and they ruled for 40 years. But the next two Sugar is still one of the biggest cash crops of the New World, and Napoleon had a two-part plan for his New World sugar empire. Part one of the plan was for the French Caribbean to grow all of the sugar, and the number one French sugar colony was Haiti, which was then called
everyone on the Creole Queen. Uh, I just have a short little announcement, and uh, I'll be a few minutes before I come back on, but I wanted uh, people with meal tickets for the buffet. There are two individuals who paid for the buffet but haven't come for their food yet. So uh, if you, if you want to get some, get some good food, uh, before we we gotta let you out again in the city. Uh, now's the time. If you uh, paid for the buffet and you haven't eaten yet, just uh, FYI. Thank you. I'll be That's back fine. in a few minutes. Thank you. 